welcome to the Cube's coverage. Brian Callaby here uh, with Ahana AI. Ahura AI. Ahura AI. Ahura AI. Um, Brian Talibi here with Ahura AI. We are at the Cube post party networking event, special on the ground, extended coverage. Brian, we were at the, the Futurist, not the Futurist Conference, the Future of Blockchain, which was the Monaco Crypto Summit over at the promotion. And now we're with a VIP gala. The Prince is here, a lot of action's happening. Um, you had a chance to look at all the presentations, look at all the heavy hitters here. There's kind of a movement going on right now. Absolutely. Well, first of all, um, I think it's absolutely amazing that Prince Albert II put this all together. He obviously understands the future and understands technology. It's absolutely brilliant. And uh, uh, Julio as well, I mean, is incredible. So uh, I take off my hat to all the people that put this event together. And uh, the speakers were brilliant. I mean, did you see all the speakers, the technologies that they've built have the potential to radically transform billions of people's lives? It's interesting, you know, I've been covering crypto for a very long time and watch it emerge and then it start exploding. And there's always been, and I saw this with the web too early on, legit versus not legit. And all early markets have the hype cycles go down and up and they always kind of have that. But now you are starting to see legitimate tie in between physical, digital assets where the, and the confluence of the business value, societal value, government value, all across the spectrum. Every vertical, every use case has got a decentralized vibe going on right now That's because exactly. it's a forcing function. And, and here in Monaco, the Prince and the team are leaning into it because I think they see the future because they can it answer their legacy. Yeah. Absolutely, and look, you're absolutely right about this because this downturn that we're facing, especially this new crypto winter, I think is the best thing that could possibly have happened to the crypto space because what it's doing is pushing out the, let's call them the less than honest brokers within the crypto community, the people that were just in it for a buck, the pump and dumpers and so forth. It's really pushing those folks out and the companies that remain are the true technologists that aren't looking at crypto as just a, a speculative asset, but rather an underlying technology that can tra transform the way that we engage with the world in a decentralized way. Yeah, Brian, you know, we didn't mention in the intro, but you also do investment. I do. You also have a lot of things going on. You've got a great history, great pedigree of, of seeing the ways of innovation in the past. That's not an investment question. Like, are you in it for the money or are you in it for the make it happen mission? That becomes kind of like the kind of the probing question. Someone comes to the table, hey, I need some cash, would you fund me? What's your exit strategy? I want to make an exit in two years. Okay, you're out. But <laughs> it's almost that easy now, right? Sure. To figure out who's in it for the money, sure. and who's in it for the mission. Now, the mission is successful, you make a lot of money. That's exactly right. Look, one of my mentors once taught me if money like power is only amassed in great amounts if indirectly sought. Because money by itself is not intrinsically a motivator. And so what we do at our, uh, AB Plus Ventures, my venture capital fund, is we only invest not only in companies that are impact driven or, and have the capacity to impact a billion people, but we invest in founders that are climbing their third or fourth mountain. So these are people who've already made their money. They either had a couple big exits at uh, over $100 million, or they became rock stars, or they became astronauts. They did things where they achieved the highest levels of achievement, and now are building technologies because they believe that they're going to impact the world in a meaningful way. They kind of know it's important, right? They made some money, they've been successful, they have scar tissue and experience to apply Almost, I won't say for the legacy of it, but more for value for, yeah. for everybody. Absolutely. All right, so I got to ask you about your current venture. I know you've got some good action going on. It's growing really good. As they say in golf, it's in the middle of the fairway. It's growing, got momentum. It's a turbulent market. Probably has some offers on the table. I mean, I could imagine all the AI you got going on sure. and blockchain. Very attractive. It's a hard problem, sure. but it's the first inning, not even. Yeah, we're very early. Look, we, we've been building our technology. It's a deep tech platform we've been building for four and a half years. There's a whole bunch of offers on the table to buy us. But look, the reality is, right now is a fantastic hiring opportunity. There's a lot of amazing talent out there that now wants to come to us, which is great, number one. Number two, if you look back to the 2000.com bubble, what you saw is all of the companies that didn't really solve real problems went away and it left more oxygen in the room for the companies that were really solving problems that needed to be solved. And those are now all trillion dollar companies. So, well, Brian, you and I both got a little gray hair, so let's talk about that. <laughs> the other thing I'll add to that, by the way, great commentary. 
is that everything that was like bullshit actually happened. People bought pet food online. Right. They had groceries delivered to their house. So to your point, mm -hmm. the things actually happened. So the visions and the aspirations mm -hmm. were correct. Timing and capital markets, free. Sure. Is there similarities going on in crypto? Is it the crypto winter weeding out those pretenders? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's definitely a lot of similarities there, but if you look at the example that you used, right? Pets.com versus Amazon. People are still buying pet food online. I buy all my pet supplies for my two puppies online. However, if you look at the reason that Amazon works, it's because of their supply chain and the in innovations that they created on being able to deliver anything to you within a day or two days in an extremely cost-effective manner. It wasn't just because they had a website and they did some hand-wavy stuff to say, isn't this a good idea? You actually have to have the underlying operational capability and innovation from a technology standpoint to make it happen. And so, when we talk about crypto, over the past number of years, and I've been in the crypto space for a long time, as you have, there's been a lot of hand-wavy stuff. There's been a lot of people like, wouldn't this be a good idea? But then you have the true operators that are able to find the underlying uh, competitive advantages that actually make it work, and that's what I'm interested in. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. First of all, great point. As if you look at, like I was just commentating earlier, I was asked the question, what I think. And I said, well, I do a lot of, uh, a lot of reporting and analysis on cloud computing. Mm -hmm. I watch what Amazon Web Service has done uh, from many, many years ago and all the followers now. Scale data, higher level services are all happening, and it's creating a lot of value. Okay, that's going to come to crypto, and so okay, the dots aren't connected there yet. But we've got this. But one of the things that has, that has proven to be a success criteria: ecosystems. Mm -hmm. When you have enabling technology like digital bits, for instance, which sure. is kind of the main powering of this ecosystem here, the value that's being created on top of it has to be a step function or multiple of the cost or operational cost to deploy the platform. Okay, so that's kind of in contrast that everyone knows. You kind of decentralize. What's your thoughts on that? Because now you have a lot of potential ecosystems that could connect together because there's no one centralized ecosystem. Absolutely. But what is, what is, how do you get that, how do you square that circle, so to speak? What's your take on that? How does ecosystems play into DeFi, decentralization, DApps, blockchain? So what you're really talking about is interoperability, right? So again, if we use an analogy, if we look back to the late 90s, when uh, Web 1.0 was really flourishing, and then uh, in the 2000s where everybody created their own websites, people went to the World Wide Web, but every company had their own website. They had their own social media platform. They had their entire uh, Salesforce platform or what have you. So everyone had their entire separate organization. And so I suspect that the future of crypto is going to be very similar, where there's going to be a bunch of different metaverses, a bunch of different ecosystems, but someone's going to come along, and I think there's a number of people on the back end that are actually working on this, some of them are really brilliant, that are going to create an interoperable mechanism for people to jump from metaverse to metaverse, from uh, chain to chain, in a completely easy uh, experience from a user experience standpoint where you don't have to have a PhD in crypto, uh, so to speak, that doesn't exist. <laughs> but you don't have to have that level of Well, if you're working on crypto expertise. for the past five years, you've got a PhD. Basically, exactly. I mean, the thesis is you're still alive producing. <laughs> well, that's a good point. So I've, I'm looking for that de facto enabler, right? Because TCP IP was an example in the old days, you know, the, the levels of the stack that never, you know, TCP IP is part of the OSI model, it's just an interconnect. That layer, nothing got above it was open. It was just hardened top at TCP IP. The rest was all standard, Ethernet, token ring, at that data layer, and then cards, and that worked. The industry could galvanize around that. I'm waiting for the crypto moment now where, what is going to be that? Cloud native is Kubernetes and service meshes and whatnot. What, is there anything on the horizon that you see that has that kind of coalescing ecosystem? Let's get, if we all get behind this, we all win, rather than chasing crumbs. Sure. You know, the bigger pie, rising tide, all that stuff. Well, so I think there's a really interesting analogy from a couple hundred years ago on this. So uh, most people don't realize that when the United States first had their railroad system, which was the innovative um, infrastructure play at the time, each state or each region had their own systems. They had different size railroads. So what would happen if you were trying to ship uh, a bunch of grain from one part of the country to the other, you would take it by a train, you get to a train station, you'd have to take everything off, put it on a different train on a different set of train tracks. You would go a couple states over, you'd have to do that again, 
go a couple states over, I have to do that again. Eventually what happened is the federal government came in and said, hey, we need to create a system of policies around one set of rules for all trains and all logistics across the country. And so I do think there's a role for governments to come together along with the operators and the companies to work collaboratively together to say, hey, what are the regulations? What are the rules of the road? How do we make sure we get all the scam artists out of the, plop, uh, out of the system? How do we create a system that actually works for everybody? Now, there's always dangers there, right? You have regulatory capture, sometimes the government oftentimes they're slow, they don't understand the technology, so they come down with a heavy hand. And so if it's done properly, and it's not just the United States alone, by the way, it's all the countries in the world now at this point, it's a global money involved too. effort, exactly. But if we're able to bring together people that are much smarter than me from the public and private sectors, as well as the nonprofit sectors, together to come up with one set of rules, I think that will enable crypto to massively expand across the entire globe. What are you passionate about right now? I know you got the, the, the investment fund for you know helping society and the, the planet. You get your project with your startup, and startup company, AI is in a hot area. What's going on? What's your top goals for the year? So there's two things. Number one, my company, Ahura AI, is my baby. It's where I spend 70, 80 hours a week. We invent a technology that enables people to learn three to five times faster than traditional education. Because I believe that education is the first step, it's the first variable that impacts all of the sustainable development goals, impacts the world in a very yeah, real way. Your, I'm not wearing my pen, I, I always point to that. Yeah. I it <laughs> but then the second thing I'm super focused on is existential risk. Look, so I threw a lot of events where I, ha I bring together four categories of people. CEOs of impact-driven companies, investors, whether they're VCs or billionaires or family offices, global global experts and celebrities that want to use influence for a good in the world. And one of the speakers that I had at one of my events is a guy at Stanford who runs their lab on existential risk. And what he told the group and what he told me is according to Stanford and all their researchers, there's a one in six chance that we're all going to go extinct by 2050. One in six, that's a dice roll. And so to me, the most important thing I can do is bring people together that have capacity, have resources, have capabilities to address these drivers of existential risk because selfishly, I don't want to live in a dystopian hellscape. All right, thanks for coming on. We're going to get back into dinner. Great to see you. Thank Appreciate you very much. The Cube After Dark, extended hours. Look at us, we're going the whole day. VIP Gala, Prince Albert, the team, Digital Bits, The Cube, all here at the Yacht Club in Monaco. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.